not recording. Okay, now recording. Um, yeah, can somebody email the entire list to let people know we're on this session? Um, okay. The siding comes, we, we got two types of siding. One was just the long strips, which are, uh, what is that called? Lap siding or not, um, whatever it's called, long strips of it. What's the, what's the name for that? It's not lap siding, it's called uh, ship, ship lap or no. We got strips, we got also the four by eight sheets. The strips didn't actually, Menards is actually quite late on it. They're supposed to be in last week, but they still don't have them. So they probably are getting in like today. Hopefully they were looking for them today. Um, we called up, but they don't have it. So let's actually leave the siding uh, for like, to actually not tomorrow or the day after when that arrives. The end point of the siding would be to, to get the siding on, cut around the windows, and we'd also like to get the paint sprayer out there so cover up the windows and, and paint it to what it would look like in real life. I think that's also a good, good thing. We've got a high pressure sprayer which goes fast. I mean you can do that whole side in like 20 minutes or so. Uh, so it's one of those high pressure sprayers that are actually those sprayers are they just spray all over the place they're not super efficient but they're actually 60 percent efficient you actually end up spraying uh, 40 percent of the paint into the atmosphere but they're fast uh, if you have those other types of sprayers so high pressure paint sprayer take a look at that just as a comment about that because we played a lot with these things um, they look like uh, we got one from Harbor Freight. Oh. It's ones that look like this. The it's a high pressure pump in there. It's like 2000 PS. It's like really high pressure. It's like hydraulic level pressure, like in a tractor. So it's actually quite forceful. But this kind of sprayer uh, gets you very fast paint rate otherwise you've got these other things which are more efficient they're probably like 80 percent efficient in, in terms of like you you blow away because it's finely atomized paint and it just goes yeah. into the atmosphere the um so windows being covered is actually critical to utilizing those too I it mean, is they overspray a lot they're very oh yeah very we want to cover them but we uh, they're not covered properly right now they're uh we'd have to Find like get the edge, get masking it tape masking up. tape right up to the edge. So yeah, why not spray it before we put windows and doors in then? Well, because uh, we already have the the windows upstairs, so it's in practice. I would think it would be like for example that window there. I mean, you just have to take it off anyway. So if you're taking it off anyway, it's hard to. Sorry. On the top and around, you have to put the siding over the flange. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So, so spraying is actually after final final uh, siding so we have to take those off to put the final siding on uh, on all the windows so the only way to do it right now is to actually uh, mask tape. tape yeah well just That's for right. time constraints let's talk about everything that needs to be done and yep. then undone from the cd go home so yep. we know if we're actually final point is the the siding and a coat of paint also on the siding there's detail like Z flashing and trim like we don't have to do the whole house but let's just show one side how the final trim would actually look like so corners you got edges there so paint and corners there's a Z flashing that's going to be in between the two seams because you got that little gap in there so that's that's it for this house on the other house we can do now the EPDM well here we, we'd like to do the door to practice the door that's good and do the windows which we can do today so we leave it at that. Then we go to the other house, do, do the interior. We could do interior wall panels, electrical, ceiling, floor, insulation. All those steps are waiting for us. We've got three, four, four, today is the 10th, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's four days of interior stuff. We can do the bathroom, uh, things like that, like connection, connecting the water system, connecting the electrical panel. Those would be interesting things to do. 
Um, here people are leaving on Monday, is that the plan? So seven people are going to the Grateful Dead? Yes, noon Monday, back noon Tuesday. Uh -huh. Are you guys going to be in shape to do anything on that, that, that Wednesday or? Well, I will. Should be. So seven people, Who's just to get a feeling, who's, who's not going? Two, four, five, six. Okay, so everyone's pretty much, um, most, most people are going. Um, okay, that's, that's the general plan. Um, interior panels, that's laugh, like in this house, we went to two, actually to two foot centers. There's laugh that goes on the inside. Now on the other house, actually, we didn't, uh, so if we wanna do laugh, which is the current method, you need lath because you need like uh, 16 inch stud spacing if you were not to use lath. We have 24 now, we migrated. Now the the Sega Home 2, that has 16 inch spacing which we moved away from. Add the cost of using lath. How do I spell lath? L-A-T-H. And then what are the interior wall? What's the interior wall? Same thing, it's, so it's beadboard. So beadboard... Um, this kind of stuff um, well, looks kind of like that it's uh, specifically speaking uh, in Menards that's what we got well it looks like that but it's not colored let's see three eighths we got something like that it's uh, paintable bead wool panel. We got the plain just wood color so we actually painted it already in white so it's th this kind of material. Um, so all right well how do we proceed? Um, quick thing I wanted to um, communicate about. Um, so I know that we're a little bit on a time crunch and you do get in the mode of lots of energy and speed and, um, and everything and I'm I was thinking about how to preserve that, but also ask for times when teaching moments can happen. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm only speaking for myself, so I'm not sure where everybody else is at, but I'm like pretty slow and learning all these things for the first time. So um, I just want to ask that uh, if it's something that needs to kind of keep on a roll, let me know, like, or just, you know, um, or maybe better, if there's a time where there can be a, a slow section where, hey, put in this row of screws and you can take as long as you want, <laughs> you know, let me know, because I don't want to interfere with the flow of the work. Um, but I also want to figure out when the good opportunities are for uh, the learning. So um, I'm not really, I don't have a concrete thing I'm asking. I'm just going to bring up the, the difference in pace mm -hmm. and um, just uh, Communicating that I'm aware of that and I don't want to get in anybody's way, um, and that I'm mm -hmm. also unaware. And if people have taken time to teach you, it's been great, so it's not a complaint here. It's just a yeah, I think yeah. anyone who's on site is helping out. Like, no need in differentiating in how much time it takes. We're all here to learn collectively. Yeah, but as someone who is slower, it's scary to kind of participate because the flow is so fast. And I don't want to frustrate anybody, you know. So I'm just, I'm, all I'm saying is I recognize that that's that the flow is what it is, and I don't desire to interrupt it. I'm, I'm saying, please, if you notice a time where, like, hey, I wouldn't be frustrated to have a slow person do this, like, come invite me, <laughs> you know, or just feel free to let me know if I'm slowing you down. Also, yeah. Have you built that? Like, have you built that you have done it enough? A little bit, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's that's partly on me. I mean, like I can decide how I feel about my participation, you know. So, and I can ask for more if I if I feel shut out. I don't. I don't feel shut out. I just uh, um, I just was noticing my hesitancy to participate sometimes, and that's why I'm talking about this. It's not. No one's doing anything wrong. Yeah. And um, like. it's a, and it is a dynamic for especially you know you have workshops with novices or, um, you know, there's a lot of, not all girls are novices, but many are because just of how culture is. So that's another kind of like, factor in it. 
like for me personally, uh, I've never built a house before, uh, and when I get up there and I'm about to do something, I, f I feel like I have 65% uh, understood, Yeah. and the rest is just pure arrogance. So that's probably <laughs> the only difference between you and me. Yeah, the, the, um, the concern for uh, things does, you know, does slow me down quite a bit, so uh, that's just a personality thing, and I, it's part of the whole thing. So. There's That's tons of dead, dead time out there too, like I would say just grab somebody and say show me how to do this kind of stuff. The other part is that uh, we don't have blueprints or like clear instructionals and everything. So like this time if we stabilize this at this version, which I think we're pretty much there, and we can get that extra material where, oh you could actually come out there with your CD Cajon Bible and right. then you can say, okay, let me look at this, let me want to see what I want to do and it's much more organized plus quality control and stuff and learning points. That's the kind of document we want to be generating for the workshop as a, yeah. as a replicable thing and yeah, yeah, yeah. something that all of us can use if anybody else is running these kinds of workshops. And we're, we're getting there. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just think about it. 7.2 minutes per wall module, 48 wall modules. So 50 times seven, 350 in principle. So 350 oh. minutes, six hours to put up the walls. Man, that's awesome. And then you've got the trusses and floor and this and that. Uh, there's some blocks we're working out, but right now, I mean, we're headed for an amazing product. I think we are going to deliver, and we won't give up till we deliver that. And then working out more details, like okay, making sure, say, the electrical install or the finishing now gets this kind of level of efficiency and all that. We're getting there. That, that, so, but as far as learning it, yeah. Um, I, I see like there's tons of dead time out there just grab people and, and yeah, uh, sure, sure. people who I just uh, noticed that and yeah. we are like it's exciting to beat our speed records too you know yeah. and so I, I just want to just want to bring it up that like, sure. I'm probably not you know I'm not going to help you break a speed record <laughs> but I do want to but I do want yes you are <laughs> yeah because yeah, contributing you record. are it's okay. I mean it's the one percent. You know what I'm saying? You know, like. Well, yeah, but it's altogether. This is like one percent inspiration, ninety-nine percent perspiration. Like once you start doing it, it's just a bunch of repetitive tasks. You got to put in all these screws and put things together. Uh, everyone can contribute. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just more, I guess, like, just. No, not two things, you know. but like saying, like, thank you. You guys have done a really awesome job, like, making space for me, and also that there's just. I mean, well, okay, so I spent a girls' afternoon yesterday, so we were talking about all these, you know, girls in this kind of environment and how how things tend to go. Boarding. You know, okay. So, so mm -hmm. um, just um, thank you for the space you've made and also, um, ever, uh, like, if there's a pace difference, I don't want to get in the way of that, but, it, you know, that is something that's a, a reality for me. So, uh, yeah. now yeah. I came in late. What I did is I would just go sit next to a group that was doing something and then pay attention and then move well, closer. No, no, one second, one second. I moved closer to the point where I would get in their way, at which point they realized that I was getting in the way and they would give me something to do. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you don't know how. Just bother with people. Yeah, just bother with people. So I said, just. Take his hammer, walk over there. You know when it feels uncomfortable, oh, I don't want to interrupt? Just make a step towards them and that's stay there. I mean, that part I know how to do. I'm just. I'm bringing it up to you guys to be aware of what's going on in my brain, you know, like, and we've all been great as well, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been, it's been fine, it's just a part of the process. Of no, no, I'm sorry, the CD Cajon is only for the elite. Can we talk about your, your yeah. vision for disassembly? Yeah. What? Nothing. The vision is nothing at the end. <laughs> no, I want to know ahead. Okay, okay, so this assembly, um, how many screws do we have in there right now? <laughs> Minus the ones that the modules come up, come down altogether. So those, that's not, not the thing. But in between each module, like say you've got, rough count is like a hundred pieces. Well, there's 48 modules, right? Each one has like 10 or 20 screws. Uh, 50 times 20, that's like a thousand. We probably are like about two buckets, which is like 4,000 screws <laughs> into this project. 
uh, we probably have to take apart like 2,000. Maybe, okay, if it's 4,000, that's the max limit, but how, how long does that take? How long does each screw take? So you, you take out, say, 10 screws. How, how long? Like 5 seconds, 10 seconds? If you go from one to the next, it's 5 seconds. And they're like right there because you don't have to hold them and they're already there. So let's say like 5 or 10 seconds. Let's say the 10 seconds <laughs> times 10 screws, it's like 100 seconds a minute. A minute. Um, Are we just going to be throwing the wood off of the top of the thing? A minute. Well, okay, let's see. 5 seconds times... 4,000, 20,000 seconds mm -hmm. divided by the number of people. Let's, let's see what that is, like theoretically speaking. Like, but I'm seeing like, bottom Seven line hours. is like, I see like three hours to take this whole thing down, really. Because it's much faster, much, much faster. There's more I mean, than even if you think about it, the whole first floor went up in one hour and 16 minutes. Yeah, that 24 was modules. Much. And that's hard. To take it down is easy. Oh, because we don't have to align. The, the second floor roof? That's a different story. Different story, but uh, still, like, say at the top, the, the plywood that's like, you know, 10 screws each or 20 screws each. Um, well, let's see, like, what's uh, 20,000 seconds to hours? Let's unscrew the bottom, tip it, and then uh, <laughs> smell it. <laughs> Man, even if we have to do. Um, yeah. It's six hours for 20, that's for 4,000 screws. Yeah, I think we have like 2,000 screws and uh, about three hours. <coughs> it's a very rudimentary estimation. That's with one person. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's so one I'm person. Right now. We got 10 people. We should be done in an hour. Yeah. Is that what I'm going to take down and put it back up? No, just take it down and put it No, just take it down for the next workshop. But I think there needs to be a, a galvanized vision of like a house wrap. Does that mean we need to have the staples all around that that one house wrap and then it needs to be split so whenever you pull that module out, it's clean, right? Or do you require to wrap it every time, which uh, might be a, a waste of resources. Those are just like some of the kind of... Yeah, like for the house wrap, we can rip it off. Um, that's it. Um, house wrap, you... When you pull on it, it you pull right through the, the staple. Uh, right. It's staples. Um, so I'm, I'm telling you, like, this is, uh, if one person was just screwing for six hours, you take out 20,000 screws if it takes you five seconds. One, two, three, four, How will they be transported four, and organized? Five. That's enough for one screw. We're, we're so like six happening. hours, we've got 10, 10, 20 people, a dozen people. So yeah, it should actually be very quick, very quick. Um, and then uh, laying the modules in a pile, in a nice, nice pile on pallets in a corner, like the north, I would say the northeast corner of the concrete pad. So we, we're like right there. We're not like carrying this like way to some workshop. It's like we're taking it down and putting it right there in a nice pile ready for the next workshop. We're gonna cover that with, uh, with the truss structure, the, the rebar truss structure that we'll build later. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the vision. Does that kind of make sense? It's going to be dangerous and slower than we think. Um, especially, how do you how are we going to be transporting wood from the top uh, roof to the um, ground? There's a doorway, and so after we take off the carport, one of the 20 foot members, you slip it out at a certain point, it bends over. Uh, I think that's pretty easy. I think the hard part is the fighting the gravity to get things up. Well, can but it's not. Can we you can do that. You can do the. You can do it, I think it'll be slower. I think to, um, for example, on the panels, I would say uh, if you have t two or three, like you bend it over, you slip it over at a certain point, well, on the, on the second floor there, your people on the bottom there, you're, you're uh, nine feet. It's nine feet to that panel. But if people on top can hold it to this point, you're like, at, you know, you're holding that panel. So you go on, you go towards the edge, you hold that panel, you go down like that. Already, it's like four feet to the ground, and people can easily catch it on the on the ground floor. Like three people there, or two people. I mean, um, like carport install until we get the second floor. Yeah. All modules down. Yeah, carport would be good. make everything easier. Right. You can take those. Yeah. You can just slide just slide it off the carport can, if you need to. You can park which is a little lower. You need to. You can park the tractor on the north side of the carport. How lower those really heavy window modules. Mm-hmm. 
I'm worried about those. You're worried about those are crazy. Mm -hmm. That means when we disconnect wall modules that are connected to them, we're going to have to regrace to unscrew yeah. to just prepare for yeah, gravity. I mean, it, it's going to be a significant safety um, concern with some of the more heavier modules. Yeah, we'll have one team on those four and like, get it down to a team. No science. Yeah, so everybody start thinking about, about it because it's going to be it's going to be like the last kind of really really laborious. And are we looking at starting that Monday? Sunday? Uh, Is that the noon? Well, no, no. I mean after <laughs> so afternoon, yeah, two two days from now we'll have the siding on definitely and the team picture. So last or next to last day. Yeah. But my experience is like fighting gravity, like to get it up is that's a different story than getting it down. It's mm. So it's gonna be fun. Can you can we use like ropes? <laughs> you can do ropes. You can yeah, like like Slide. you can put in a hook, for example, and put a rope on it if you want to. Yeah, I like that. I mean, a little extra step, but you can. I mean, you can just you got. Yeah, it, if you want to do it, it for the window modules, but the other ones. I think it works well if you had a had a if you took two two, uh, two by twelve to slide them down on if that even works. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! 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 Not when the window moves, but yeah, man, twenty foot pieces like that you get a ramp. Yeah, maybe we can space it so the windows uh, oh, yeah, are it's outside gonna be bad. of the it's two. Gonna be fun. <laughs> but if we space them, we can fit a window in between and won't get hurt on the way down. If you do a ramp of like one, two, three, four, or five, two by twelves piece of cake, you just slide it down. Yeah, and the ratchet right strap with the hook on. It's not going to be bad. <laughs> so, I'm all in. All right, so let's get into. Okay, let's talk about doors. So uh, the French door, which is a whole treat of how you install that. We documented that a bit. Uh, so let's see. I would say House Design Guide has this. House Design Guide for doors. Let's see, do we have anything under doors for here? And then I'll take a look at under build instructions here. Um, I think we have information on Let's see, electrical, bathroom, kitchen, soap, plate, painting, or maybe, con no, here, let's see, do we have anything here, so door, <coughs> door, door and window detail, ah, yes, so what we want to, so this is what we did, you can take a look at all these this is actually in the house design guide if you go into details and build techniques door and window detail um, here's how you flash a window window um, let's see let's pull up I think it was under conceptual design here actually Under module breakdown. Okay, let me go to my login door install. Door and window flashing detail. Oh, yes. No, that was here. Where's our double door? Okay, I think here maybe. Ah, here. So this is actually a full inst instructional set on flashing detail. Oh yeah, I actually drew that out there, so door detail. So um, the way you want to go is do a, a flashing, uh, basically a sill pan. So at the bottom of the door is where you've got water possibly splashing up, so your door sill is a little bit off the, off the ground level for one. But the critical part is this red part. It's a pan, and they, they talk about how to do that. We actually got this material, this flexible pan material that you just bend around the corners to conform to the door. But the thing is to get that little lip on the back, so if water does get in there, so you've got 
say water coming down from the atmosphere uh, if anything gets in there it's blocked at this at the back trim behind the door so that's the exterior uh, flexible corner flashing also on that corner there so let's actually play that video because that was a nice uh, a dedicated video on French doors um, is it on the wiki side? Sorry. yeah it's this yeah this was from the, uh, the link is on the wiki page look at my my log and look control F for door and window flashing detail but here's the the detail of the pan so we hung French doors French doors so let's you can play, I like pushing corners with membrane uh, no, hold the corners I think. and a peel and stick I'm gonna put a thank you very much for your participation in this program so let's take a look at what the actual procedure is because th we're gonna follow this pretty much exactly it's, it's exhaustive systems for just a minute. Now I believe the pan systems should go underneath all French doors. I don't care if it's first floor or second floor. If it's me, I'm going to put a pan system under all French doors. Now you have a decision to make. You can either use a metal pan, which is fine. You can use a plastic pan, these PVC things that put together with glue. If you like those, use them. I don't personally care for them. Or you can use a membrane pan. Now frankly, I like membrane pans. First floor or second floor. If it's me, I'm going to put a pan system under all French doors. Now you have a decision to make. You can either use a metal pan, which is fine. You can use a plastic pan, you have some PVC things, things that put together with glue. If you like those, use them. I don't personally care for them. Or you can use a membrane pan. Now, frankly, I like membrane pans. That's where you use a flashing corner. Uh, there's different brands of flashing corners. You know, we can supply some. Pop Industrial supplies them. You can get them from, uh, you know, more than one outfit. Uh, flashing corners with membrane will work great. I like membrane pans because they're going to fit your rough opening every time. If you order a metal pan, uh, it has to be exactly right for your rough opening. And sometimes there's a problem with supply. You have the sheet of pair at the time. And there's some additional issues with them with uh, metal pants. Now, I like metal pants, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you have any questions about where you get flashing corners, you can go to your local supply house. They have to know where you can get them. You can go to my website, www.tmslabs.com. We can hook up some flashing corners. Um, you know, wherever you get flashing corners is great. If you use flashing corners and a peel and stick waterproof membrane, particularly the way that we show you here, at least you know your membrane will be on the job site, it'll fit perfectly, and it'll be extremely effective in keeping water out of your home. So if it's me, I'm going to use a pan system. Personally, I'm going to use a membrane pan, and we're going to show you how to do that right now. Is that your dad, Logan? That's our, our door right now. To be three quarters of an inch greater in width and height than the net frame size of the door. So that's our rough opening. But we just want to make sure we have plenty of room for a pan system. Uh, so this is how we put our membrane pan. We, we have have this membrane six still. inches over the subfloor. We have this material. Vertical slices are applied, and the membrane will be folded down onto the subfloor. Like that. Uh, well, the TV, uh, okay, now it's time to put some flashing corners in. And to do that, we're going to use a little bit of sealant and a couple of pre-made flashing corners. Uh, we're using a high-quality polyurethane sealant. Over here. We're going to put some sealant down so that water can't be... You want to... Uh, oh, can you, like, maybe... Well, let's see, can, does it fix itself? Can you go back to mine, maybe? Seems like a crash. Yeah, it's connecting again. How oh, did you uh, end the meeting? No, not that I know of. There we are, we're back. Yeah, works now. Okay, now it's time to put some flashing corners in. And to do that, we're going to use a little bit of sealant and a couple of pre-made flashing corners. We're using a high-quality polyurethane sealant. We're going to put some sealant down so that water can't be driven up into our home. Can you use some caulk? But because we're taking it off, just put it in a little bit. They staple it. So that's a nice corner there. Otherwise, like that's a real trouble spot on doors. The bottom. Yeah, is the memory clear? The flashing corner there is clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We got those green ones. We can use those same ones that we used on the windows. All right. To make your life a lot easier. That is good. Please stay. You're gonna mark where the next because we're gonna still have flashing over. Is gonna stop. 
that'll make life a lot easier. So, okay, we're going to take the dimension of our door, which is this dimension here, and we added three quarters of an inch because we've got three quarters of an inch uh, room at the sill of our door to pull our membrane up. And right now that might not make sense to you, but we're going to run two beads of sealant in preparation for our next membrane application. Now, the membrane we're going to use is not going to have a sticky back, so it's real safe putting it on top of the sealant. We're going to use a product called Future Flash. However, there's, other, there's another product out there by the top Rainbuster guys. They have a product called uh, 420. You can use either one of those products for this next step. Percy's gone six inches up the trimmer. You know, the flashing corner is four, plus two inches above that. All right, this is a product called Future Flash. Um, it is not sticky on the back. It's got polyolefin uh, coating on both sides of an SBS uh, waterproof membrane. And you'll see why I like it right now. Go ahead. If you want to use a metal pan, use a metal pan. This membrane pan, though, should save you money. And it will fit the opening perfectly. So it's cheaper than metal, the metal pan. Mm -hmm. cool. All right, once you properly fit this membrane material and created uh, your pan, you're going to put a couple of slices in it so that you can fold down and away. These are very simple cuts, nothing fancy. And this will allow you to fold the membrane down. You want to see sealant squeezing out like that. A little bit of sealant peeking out is good. That way you know that there's not a path of water to get in the home right there. And as always, we're going to tool our sealant. We never leave sealant untooled. We always knock it down. Now it's time to apply our side flashing. We're using an AMA method B, which means that our side flashing is going to go under the nail fin. So this B method, AMA method B, puts the flashing under the nail fin and has the WRB applied after the door. WRB is house wrap. And that's the strategy we're using right now. Okay, now you've got a decision to make with how you apply sealant below your door. You're either going to use a barrier method or you're going to use a drainage method. The drainage method assumes that at some point in the future you might get a little water in your system. Either the door leaks or somebody's done something around the door that's allowed a little water to get behind your system. In a drainage strategy, we're going to leave some gaps in the sealant so that any water that we get in there will have an evacuation plan, will have a way out. Now there are people who don't believe that's the right way to go. They want a barrier method. A barrier method is going to have a continuous bead of sealant running down the trimmers all the way across the rough opening and up the other trimmer. It's a barrier method that completely keeps water out of the opening and does not anticipate water will ever get in your opening. Or if it's on water gets in, it won't make a difference. I can't tell you which way to go. I, what I'm going to show you now, though, is a drainage method. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a discontinuous bead of sealant below the door, um, how I would do it if it were me. So here's a drainage method of sealant application. For a drainage method of sealant application, this is how we would do it. As you can see, we've left three-inch gaps at the lower corners, but we've completely sealed the center of the door. Now, this is in case we get some water uh, maybe through the frame of the door, if you're using a door system, you think it might have water come through it. Notice that the outboard edge of the sealant is right at the edge of the subfloor. When the door sits in place, you're going to see squeeze out everywhere that you use sealant. We're given a water evacuation route on the far right and the far left. In the center, we apply sealant in such a way that we will have squeeze out. Now it's time to prepare the door and set the door. Okay, now, many doors have this type of nail fin. This fin pivots, uh, makes for easy shipping. You'll have, have a nail all fin. Kinds of stickers have and things. A, you want to make sure that you pull all your stickers off. And because this fin rotates like this, we are going to take care of this joint, both from the inside and from the outside. And we'll show you how we do that right now. Also, you're going to find that you're going to have open corners at the upper right and the left. We're going to show you how to take care of that as well. Now, you want to remove your stickers from the nail fin. And the reason why is the adhesive they use to apply that sticker is not going to last a long time. So any sealant or anything that we put on top of that nail pen that is intended to last a long time that will be limited by the lifespan of this sticker sealant. So it might sound crazy, but make sure you remove the stickers from your nail pens. Yeah, and then, and then how do you actually how do you actually install the door? So we didn't get to the oh yeah so. I guess at the end of this video here, I gotta go to the second video, which is uh, sequel there. Hey. 
first we're going to put a sealant on that. Now this is how we think sealant should be applied. First we're going to put a sealant on that pivot joint that we were talking about. We believe this joint represents an opportunity for water to get in the system. So we're going to put sealant on that hinge point and then we're going to tool it down. Now we tool it down with our fingers, but you might do something else. Your hinge point is covered and sealant has been applied to the outboard edge of the nail pin, covering the pre-punch holes. This sealant application is perfect. All right, this is our condition at the top of the door where our side nail pin and our top nail pin come together. Notice that's an open corner. Now because we've got a pan system down there, there's a buildup of material at the lower corner. If we apply flashing corners up here, we can do two things. We can help correct this problem with the open corners here, and we can counteract the, and we can offset the uh, materials down below with some additional material above and help keep this door pump. So here, all right, we apply a little bit of sealant on the door jam. Notice that there's sealant behind the nail pins already. So this should make for a condition that's very easy to simply apply a flashing corner on here, like this. So they like to use flashing corners on the top as well, not like the windows. Okay, it's important to put the sill of the door in first and sill then push the door. door into the rough opening. You're going to tilt it into the rough opening. All right, now that the inside, after your door is level square and plumb, it's really important that you apply shims. You want to have shims behind your hinges. You should have shims behind every hinge. And we're not done. But it's really important that you understand that shims are important. And you shim all the way around your door. Shims are important because you've got big, heavy door sash. And as the door sash swing, it's going to want the frame of the door to flex. And your shims prevent that. So shims are extremely important. They keep your door level square and plumb, and they stop the door from flexing as the door swings. So don't forget shims. OK, now we're going to talk about a concept that a lot of people really don't understand, and that's the concept of plumb. Everybody seems to know what plumb is. <coughs> but plumb is something that a lot of guys don't get. When we talk about plumb, what we really are talking about is something that's perpendicular to the earth, that's plumb. Also, you want a door that is within cross sight. So what's really more important is that your door is within cross sight. And that means that the jam is in the same plane all the way across um, the, the span of the opening. Hopefully, it's in the same plane as your wall system as well. It should be. You need walls that are plumb and, and within cross sight. What we're going to show you now is a very simple technique for ensuring that your door is within cross sight. It's called a string test. We're applying simple mason string on the lower corner of the door. And we're going to run it all the way across, and we're going to attach it to the upper corner. So that's a good thing to do. Do this. The other corner, pull it down across the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, now then, we're holding the, the string, string, string on the lower corner of the door. Yes. That's in the same plane as the upper corners of the string would have been stapled to the door. You can use tape if you want. What you'll find is that in the center, where the string touches, they just touch. You just gently touch in the center. You can see here. You can see here that the string gently touches in the center. Now then, let's flip the string around. And again, it should just gently touch in the center. So there's a very simple test. It's called a string test. It's an old, old trick in the book that a lot of old carpenters use. And I think it has a, a lot of good uses here. Here's the inside of our pan. Now, you remember earlier we said that our pan membrane was going to come in about three quarters of an inch uh, deeper than the door. And this is why. We're going to fold this material upwards after we apply sealant to terminate our pan. And we're going to show you that right now. Go ahead, Percy. So now fold up. Take about a quarter inch bead of sealant and put it to the inside of the French door sill and about six inches up the sides. Just follow your future flash membrane. Once your sealant is applied, we're mm -hmm. going to fold this membrane upwards. We're going to hold the membrane temporarily in place with tape. Now the tape can either remain or it can be pulled off later. After the sealant sets up, it will permanently hold this membrane in place. Uh, if the tape is left in place, it won't create anything, it may be covered by your like uh, So the tape it's can remain, or the tape can be flexible removed. membrane. It's time to put the final step of top flashing on. Now they've cut this top flashing. Top flashing. The dimension of the opening plus two times the flashing. Same plus two material inches. as the bottom. Of that the allows board. us to have the flashing lap about an inch beyond each side of the side flashing. And there we have it. That's a very finely prepared and installed French door. I would suggest mm -hmm. that this installation is never going to leak, and that's what people want. Okay. Some whole French door out swing. Installed correctly, this will never leave. Hi, folks.
Here's a picture of a metal pan. We like metal pans. This metal pan is correctly fabricated. It has a one inch inside vertical lip. All the seams are soldered. This pan looks great. Just remember that metal pans are conductors of heat and cold. So in a cold climate, it may sweat. It may have some condensation, which can mm -hmm. cause real problems with wood flooring. So if you live in a cold climate, uh, a pan that doesn't sweat like a membrane pan may be a good choice. This is a photograph from a recent investigation of a serious French door leak due to pan damage. The next video clips cover some points I think we missed the first time through. The easiest way to determine if your door is square is to take diagonal measurements. And your diagonal measurements should be the same. Uh, we do believe that tolerance, I mean, nothing's perfect. So a tolerance could be an eighth of an inch. It needs to be no greater than an eighth of an inch different. It's like this. And these, these are chevrons. And they're designed to be used at these upper corners. Since there's plenty of squeeze out of sealant already in place, the chevron's going to come out of the little packet it was in. And you're going to press it in place just like this. And it's always a good idea to use these. Now, now we're applying our cap feed of sealant on top of the nail fin. This is going to be about a half inch feed of sealant. And after this is applied, we'll butter it flat. Again, if you've watched any of our videos, you know that we uh, really encourage you to radius the corners of your putty knife. And this is done on a grinder, very simple. But what this is going to allow you to do is butter your sealant in such a way that it kicks up against the jam and protects this area here. This, this fin actually pivots or rotates. And we need to protect this area right here. This is a very important area to protect. And you'll see in just a minute how radiusing this knife uh, goes a long way towards helping us there. Radius putty knife kicks our sealant into that corner where our rotating nail fin is. Now remember, the reason we think this is so important is we are not going to apply another strip or course of membrane flashing on top of the nail fin. This sealant application eliminates the need for additional flashing materials on top of this nail fin. Guys, hey, I just watched the video that you just watched, and I have some notes of some issues I think we need to cover a little better. First, this video really is designed for experienced installers. If you're a beginner, you probably need a little more help than this video can offer. You know, this video assumes that you know how to use tools, <coughs> safety equipment, levels, power tools. Uh, if you don't know how to use those things, um, you should take some more steps in your training. Next, fastening the doors in place. With the doors closed, you want to set your shims. And set your shims around the perimeter of the door after you've set a couple of shims in the center between your two door sash. That's a really helpful tip there because what uh, the shims in the center will do is it will stop you from over shimming at the sides and binding your doors together. Uh, Everybody does that. About that. Uh, they don't put so shims in the center. They Center? So we have a door that has, a, I think, a strip in the middle. So we don't have a... So that's a French door there. We, oh yeah, so we don't have a separation in the center, so this point does not apply to us here. Yeah. It's, they're already fixed to each other, the French doors? There is no... Well, they're fixed to the out, outside frame. There is no dividing strip in the middle. I think that's what he's talking about here. You just put shims around the perimeter, and then the doors don't operate very well. So if you put a couple of shims in the center, and then shim around the perimeter, uh, your doors will operate real nice. What you want to do is you want to pre-drill through your side jam, so that you can apply three inch screws through your side jam and through shims. The pre-drilling is important because it'll make the screws go through a lot easier and it'll make a, a much cleaner look to it. Uh, you should yeah, also counterseat so those screws. So, uh, so how are we fixing that door frame into the rough opening? So you got shims behind the frame and three inch screws. Pre-drill so it's neat. We can use the three inch deck screws, the construction screws. Um, Maybe I'll plug on top of it later. But with the doors closed, you want to set your shims, apply your screws around the perimeter, and then you're going to open your doors, make sure that the doors open and close, check and recheck the level square and plumb, and then you're going to apply your 3-inch screws through the hinges. There would be one screw per hinge, and apply your screws through your hinges into the framing. And that will fasten your door in place really well. Uh, you're going to want to recheck and check level square and plumb multiple times. And then Why do it with the door closed? Why fix your door to the frame with the door closed, not open? It depends on the yeah, if you're closed, you can't skew the door. And once you're sure your door is level square and plumb, then you're going to push your screws through the nail fin of the door. Right. Set your screws through the nail fin, 9 to 18 inches on center, and then put your cavity seal on top of that. Metal so, pants. So we, we don't have a nail fin, so most of that strength comes from screwing in through the frame. The What we do have is trim on the outside of the door, but that's, I don't think that's structural meant to be used for attachment because the final siding actually goes next to it and you cock it up, cock it up there, but it's, it's not meant... Are we nail fin here. any type of membrane or fin on the outside uh, between the, the, the gap in the door and the... Cock it up. Okay. Cock that up. Uh, so right 
what you have, what you had here was the black material. What's the equivalent of our of the nail fin there, which you set screws through, is basically trim on the outside. So just push that against the black material with the caulk behind, like on top of the black material, like they showed. And then the siding will actually go right next to it. We'll caulk it up again. So it's quite a bit here. About, if you want to use a metal pen, that's great. We like metal pens. But make sure that the inside lip is positioned in such a way that the door will sit inside of that inside lip. When the door tilts into place, you don't want to crush that inside lip. And What's the challenge of a metal pan? It needs perfectly shaped. Fit. I like the fit part because there's going to be a thousand different French doors. So every metal pan is going to have to be custom. Where are you going to get that? Custom <coughs> jobs that tends to be more expensive. So the flexible pan it's definitely a good idea. And, you know, that's really important. So not only does the pan have to fit side to side, but it has to fit the depth of your door. And it has you want that inside lip to be about an eighth of an inch inside the cell of the door. Any more than that, and your flooring contractor is going to flatten it to put the carpet tack strip down and get the tile in. Uh, any less than that, and you're liable to crush it when the door sits in place. So if you want to use a pan, that's great. Make sure your inside lip is positioned correctly. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can call us anytime, 800-310-7673. Thank you very much for your support. Here's a couple of photographs I thought you might find interesting. These are of expensive copper pans that were damaged when the door was set on top of the inside vertical lip and crushed. And this photograph in particular shows a serious leak. Also remember that metal pans conduct temperature, and in a cold climate it can create condensation and damage wood flooring. Keep it in mind. <laughs> Man, uh, so that's quite a bit. I'm thinking we should do it on a real house. Yeah. Uh, which, what's the disadvantage of that? <laughs> We'd have to Photoshop the, the team sh team shot for the empty door there. Someone holds it on the inside. Oh, the photo. oh, you want to do it on the other house? Yeah, where it's the final installation because we could practice here and then take it over and do it again. But since it's got a few steps in there, the the plumbing part, I think maybe we just do it on a real house, mm -hmm. a real house as in the one that's actually going to be our showcase. So that's that's going to be like the thing in a in the first brochure until we build the first one in the real life. So, uh, yeah. Are we going to get to doing the uh, in-floor uh, tubing and heating in the, the seat house too? No, that doesn't have it in this, this iteration. So no. we've done that before. It's a module that's red, readily retrofittable. You, uh -huh. can, you can just raise your floor. And what we've done before is uh, do stringers, stringers, so long two by fours. Put your coils in between that, just run it way back and forth, and fill it with sand. Yeah. Actually, that part was important. Fill that all that space with a lot of sand because otherwise, as soon as the heat goes out, like your stove goes out, the house gets cold. If you have all that sand and material in there, it traps that heat, and like all night, you'll have a warm floor. The, the sand's better than the cement, yeah. But you could do cement too, uh, but cement is going to be much more expensive. That, then you have to do that as part of the foundation job. As opposed to laying, right now we have a concrete floor. We can we can easily lay the hydronic in the ground heating on top of it by building up the floor a little bit. And if we do that, I, I'm saying we, we should do things like sand, some material that absorbs all that heat and releases it over a longer period than just right after the stove goes out or heat, heating system goes out. Yeah. Is, is but we are going to do hydronics in the no in the aquaponics. We can do that readily, yeah. Um, Have you polished the concrete floor in the CEO Have you done that? Yeah. Uh, we uh, we did a we start on it. Uh, you have to have the machine for that. We we took some grinders to it and and did just uh, there's a. So let's look at the probably house design guide. How do you do that? The There's a, like five. How you do the corners? Yeah. Before the f the walls are up, I would oh, say. Okay. I would I would do it all like right after you did the pad and stuff, so you have nothing in a way. Okay. Uh, but let's see. Do we have um, polished <laughs> polished? No, we don't have it. <coughs> do we? Well, but polished concrete, let's do let's do that. 
there's like five grits of polishing pads that you need to go through. You could do as simple as a car buffer. We can actually do that. We've got all the pads and I mean this is the final product but that, that's what you do. You got to go through a series of consecutively finer grits starting with like um, so first of all this is a, a diamond grinder. If you have uneven concrete this takes this grinds it very easily. We've got that but that's not that's like if you have rough spots but after that you go through a bunch of grits um, so I guess so that's the wheel we got um, got this thing nine inch diamond cup grinding wheel uh, as far as the yeah I got this but let's see the what do we get for the actual polishing pads so this is pretty much a lot of detail here um, they use a machine that looks like this, so it looks like the. Um, well, yeah, what kind of like what we use? Um, so you get something like this on Amazon. So you got a sticky pad and the actual grinder wheel. The grinder wheel is plastic material with embedded diamond grit. That's what it is and up to 3,000 very very fine grit 3,000 per inch you start at like 50 uh, so 50 probably like to 200 like with the with the the power trowel where we, where we got it shiny we probably got it to like 100 or 200 because we just kept working it so then you'd probably keep going to the next ones but we could take we've got this stuff here we can take the buffer so um, what's a buffer look like? You can do a hand buffer. How do you do that? A car polisher kind of a thing works on that. One of these. The, the, the thing is, uh, the thing you want to pay attention to is the speed. These things allow you to go change the speed from, it's not like a grinder which is 3000 RPM. This is slow. It's like maybe 300 to 1,500. Um, it's always like your, I mean your, bl your uh, grinding thing will just fly apart. It's it's a slower process. It's it's more like the kind of RPMs that are found in uh, when we did the power trowel, but faster, much faster than that, but way slower than a like a regular grinder. You want it speed controllable, but you can do this and it, but problem is that will take you forever that you got to go through a bunch of grit but you can get like you know if you want to baby a, like a two by two foot area like in an hour probably you'll have that really nice and shiny um, but, but then the foundation is a thousand times that so uh, so that's like 25 hours of just sitting there doing that <laughs> it's like or 250 hours is that, is that usually rentable the water board Nope, couldn't find it. Okay, so so uh, yeah, open source this thing. So um, so we've got concrete pol polisher rental. We have concrete grinders rental. Concrete. So you have concrete grinders which are different yeah. that's not what you're talking about wait well, is that, that is that it concrete grinder no that's got um little tines that actually grinding. grind into the concrete usually yeah oh. four hours it's 150 bucks you can't get it man it this is a great territory <laughs> for open that's sourcing really why is this relevant because that that's floor so lives forever that's you so never so ever so have to okay. buff it again right already got a concrete foundation, why not use it as before? Exactly. I yeah. have, there's stamps you can do to make it look like wood too now. Yeah. So, so, I mean, this is what you get at the end of the day if you want to, I think that's very aesthetic. Yeah. Mm. I mean, man, that's really good. And you got those 
concrete joints that were cut there. Yeah, At a certain those step. Uh, those, those are just cut in, right? Those yeah. Ones. And then filled in. And this is just polished. This is not any kind of a urethane coat or something like that. You can get similar to this by grinding less, like go down to like what we have comparable to what we have on the shiny parts of our of our power trial mm -hmm. area. And that will look very shiny, but you have to reapply it every so often. Mm -hmm. So if you go all the way with the grit, 1,500 to 3,000, uh, no more forever. So that's really good. That's called lifetime design. So that fits our criteria here for the long-term floor. How do you do the corners here? Well, the uh, those are little grinding pieces all the way. Around. Yeah. Well, the machines they have, they have those those wheels go like right up to to the edge, but you'll miss a little bit there. So the only way you could completely get the corners is like by hand, like with one of the hand ones, or do it before the walls are up. That's easier. Uh, you can do a dry or wet. Uh, the dry route kicks up a lot of dust. The wet is messy. It's like it's all mess all over the place. Dry route, no walls. I prefer that. No cleanup. It goes into the air. Yeah. What are the advantages? Of wet concrete <laughs> polishing. Um, yeah, I think it's. Um, so what do they say? The main thing is less. They say of wet is less expensive, dust-free, shorter downtime. Um, Downtime would be, I think, for dust, dust generation. But no, those things have, those things have dust collection in them too. So, um, for any kind of structure. Oh, higher shine for dry, oh. you get just a better shine, which is, that's good. Does more to the slab in terms of hardening and condensing. So yeah, you get a better result with the the dry method. Uh, can be done in both open areas and small nooks thanks to hand machines. So yeah, the corners you do hang, hand machines. Um, but the advantage of wet is like it's dust free. So yeah. you, uh, it says it's also less expensive. But this uh, wears out the disadvantages of wet. Can't achieve the sum of the high gloss. Can't use hand machines, so limited to large open access areas only. I wonder if you could do a, you know, get to your 1500 grit with the wet method. Yeah, possibly. But, you know, yeah. Maybe two different machines, unless we open source it for a multi purpose machine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the door. Um, so, yeah, quite uh, ex extensive detail on a door. So wh what do we want to do today? Maybe we can focus on a door. We can do on a, on a house here itself. It's installing the windows and the second layer of house wrap. We want to do that. Let's do the second layer of house wrap. Um, how do we do that? I would suggest going to the roof. I've thought about this. Like how do you do it? Either scaffolding or off the roof. I would suggest cut the thing into four pieces, one for each side. Hang it off the roof with a long bar across the top so you can just nail the bar in. See that? Uh, put a not necessarily a two by four, but like lath strip. Staple that. So lath is one by twos. Say they're ten feet. Those ladders should suffice to just run the ladder around. You can, but you going up and down in quite a bit of times. I work out. Um. I would do it on a roof to save some energy, because then you hold. You have four people hold it in four sections. Just slide it over. When it slid all the way over, a few screws, you got it. Then you just gotta tack it in on a ladder. At that point, it's like you can almost reach it. Well, you gotta get on some some form of ladder. But then you don't have to hold it with one hand. Like yeah, it's just. On the roof. And then maybe yeah. you could just do the lines that are the last one. 
you can reach, you know, yeah. off the roof, you reach a couple of feet down, or just use that top strip. I would do that. That would be a good experiment of, of, in terms of how effective that is, because that is a real issue. Like, how do you get this thing up there without a lot of scaffolding in place and safely? Like repelling harnesses. <laughs> it would look cool. It'd be good. Yeah, and we don't have that kind of equipment because we don't have a sloped roof. Yeah. In a normal sloped roof, you would have the oh, repelling yeah, yeah. equipment and safety equi safety harnesses and all that. That's the advantage of the flat roof. Don't need that right now. Otherwise, roofs and ladders are the two accident points of house constructions. Mm -hmm. um, and then what should we expect tonight uh, as far as the drinks? Is there anything that we need to bring or is there anything we should prepare? Should we shower first? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What time? It's 5 p.m.? It's at 5 p.m. Yeah. Is there food? Damn it. I was I was getting excited about the 5:30 enterprise session. Okay, no, we'll do that tomorrow. Um, well, no, I, I don't know. Just uh, party time. That's all. Five, five p.m. Yeah. Bring your party hats. <laughs> Is there any food? I think there's Whatever y'all are bringing. Mike. No, I, I don't know. Did Katrina say something about food? No. Uh, just drinks, which that's the important one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fill yourself how you fill yourself. No, but she mentioned going by, she doesn't drive, so so she mentioned taking someone and going by yeah. and yeah, the and the dollar store. Two or three. What? Oh, she's taking Paul one. Paul one. I think he's like three. Paul three. one over. Who's Paul three? He's the demo. He's the demo. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a Paul two anymore. You threatened yeah, the demo. No, no, we got a three. I know we do. You threatened the demo. Is he, one. He's the P A W L. The P -A -W -L. Paul. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, from cool. Poland. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, but okay, so that's house wrap. So house wrap and windows. Um people into that. Who wants to do windows? Who wants to learn how to put in a window? Yeah, I mean we've got two windows on the first floor, easy working height, flashing yeah. corners. Um I I'll re watch the video one more time and then Yeah. With Natalie, if you want to, Natalie, and then we can, we can pop them in. Yeah, and no flashing, uh, no corners on top, and no flashing at the bottom, right? Yeah, so um, let's do a quick diagram just like we did yesterday. So um, duplicate the slide. So let's say window summary. So we've done windows a few times here. So window install summary. Uh, share this doc to be live editable by anybody. That's our little collaborative design exercise. So, chat box, please look at the chat box in Zoom for a direct link. All right, window install summary. We use these flashing corners. Yes, indeed. You can, oh, oops. Uh, where do you get them? Menards or Home Depot. So, okay, let's leave that thing. So this here is a flexible corner flashing. So you're gonna need a door rough, a window rough opening, which we already have all framed up. Mm -hmm. So you all already have this, this thing, whatever the frame around it is looks like that somewhat so put your first step first step uh, cut the house wrap in an X somebody edited this too mm -hmm. cut the house wrap in an X now here on top you want to cut there's one detail where I can't edit it it's um, still texted. refresh it says anyone on the yeah, right. internet can find an edit you're right. Okay, this top line here, what you need to do is cut, I'm going to put a red, big red mark here, cut that off in terms of the house wrap. You don't want the house wrap to be carried under and wick water into the window, so you cut it right up. Not only that, you actually do, uh, which we actually forgot in, in the other windows but it doesn't matter. Uh, you're gonna slit the house wrap in fact 
at an angle like this and lift that up so that's your window hole so you're slitting your house house wrap like this and lifting it up lift it up because the proper detail there is window flashing it's a uh, shape like this so over that top of the window we put this it's called drip cap we install that after we install that we fold the, the house wrap back over it and tape over that so step one cut out the window cavity that's that's already Oh, that's already been done there, but yeah. Step two, cut the the top of the the house wrap. So there has to be enough where you cut it, but you can still have you can still cover your new flashing component. Yeah, cut top of house wrap and fold it and tape it up so it's not in your way. Okay. And uh tape it up oh there we go nice so we got the butyl tape or you can use butyl tape or asphalt tape this is uh, um, this kind of stuff it's like the stuff's a little cheaper um, so copy that what's the purpose of these things these things are self sealing they are self they're self adhesive but what it means it's it's also self sealing if you if you poke a, ni a knife or huh, a knife a uh, screw or nail into it it should seal around it because you're actually screwing into it so so this this w this flashing tape goes where so let's make it um, blue but the flashing tape goes on this edge on this edge bottom edge okay let's let's look at the detail of how we flash up around the let's actually start a new slide so the bottom corners are most important because that's where water can dribble down to and get inside your window we're peeling this up on top using let's let's find drip cap it's um, drip cap menards to show you the exact thing we have so this stuff so this little drip cap I'm gonna this goes over the window right to the edge of the window so let me cut it out here. That goes um, on top of the, the tape? Yeah, uh, well, no. So this goes under the flashing. Sorry, under the, the WRB, weather resistive barrier, house wrap. So this goes under the red. Uh, it's kind of hard to draw it here, but um, cut top, top of house wrap and tape it up. Now this is after the window is in, so we don't have the window in yet. So the flashing tape goes in like this everywhere on the edges, kind of wrap it around the edges. Make the tape go under, tape it up, okay, flashing tape on three sides. Where the nail fin is going to, these windows have nail fins, mm -hmm. Where, wherever you're going to drill the screws in that's where the, the the flashing tape has to be under that oh I got you. that's the deal that's flashing tape under that 
on three sides under where nailing fin will be screwed down. And it's also wrapped around the corner. Yeah, it wraps around the corner yeah. just a little bit. Nailing fin is like those nailing holes are probably like half an inch or like an inch away from that. So make sure you have like at least an inch, like two inches of the tape under the nailing fin. So that's that. Uh, let's talk about uh, detail for how you do the corner. So so if you've got the corner, how do you tape it up? What's most important? Water goes in, so you've got let's see um, you've got water dribbles <laughs> from the top so you got your uh, there's water coming down so where you gotta tape it up? Uh, this is your flashing tape. So what's the most important seam here? So this seam would be talk about where water comes in. This is your tape. Tape it up like that first. That's strip one. So you prevent this water from getting under there. You don't have to worry about this one. Uh, the one in red here. That one is inside the, the window frame so you don't have to worry about that much so much. Um, so don't worry about that. Okay, second, this is about eight inches long or so, about eight inches. Where's the second one gonna go? This vertical seam that's exposed here. This one. So this is flashing tape. The green one is the, the, the singular ones that go on top of it. So the, this green thing, that's the flashing corners. This one first. Those are these things. Those go in first, yep. Uh, these things. Uh, now ordinarily, would you caulk inside the window for those? Or do you just rely on the tape? Uh, do you want to caulk them? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Nah, just tape. I would say just tape. If you have caulk in there, inside, water gets down there, it stays at the caulk, little pockets. Forget it. Uh, do the tape tape like this. Two strips are fine. This one here, well, the, the fin is going to be over that, so you don't really need to worry about that. These, these two are the critical ones. So tape it up with 8-inch strips of flashing tape. Uh, doesn't that flash that we were doing on the that edge cover them automatic? Magazine? Which one? The the one that we're running all the way up the, the side. That's before the. Yeah. Right. Or you guys just did two? I mean, I, I'm fine with doing two layers if that's the thing, but. Uh, do these three strips first. Flashing tape on three sides, then then flashing corners. Okay. Yeah? Oh, maybe we didn't do it that way. I, I think that's convenient because then you tape up the whole house wrap tape yeah, next to the house over. and then do the flashing corners after that. That tape is very sticky so it will stick quite well. Then flashing corners. Um, then install the window. If we're doing this for real, you would caulk under the nailing fin, but only on three sides. Install window. Do not uh, fix the bottom side with caulk or screws. You want water to leak. If any water gets in there, have an entry exit. So the bottom, uh, don't screw in the bottom. Screw in the tops and si the top and sides all the way every six every hole in the nailing fin. So do not fix the bottom 
So just remember at that point you want water to leak out. Then you fold back, then you put in your drip cap, install drip cap. So this is, uh, so let's put a link to that. What I do in these documents is I put a blue boundary about, about it to, to show that it's hyperlinked. That's a very convenient thing, then you can go right to it and you can go to Menards from it. So that serves like a visual bill of materials. It's a very useful thing for clear development here. So yeah, then you put this on. That's the drip cap. So install drip cap. Fold. No, no, that's separate. That's a separate thing right here. Doesn't come with the window. Window just comes by itself. Uh, so this is this is drip cap. Uh, the type of tape we use is flashing tape, four inch on three sides. Install drip cap, fold weather resistive barrier or fold house wrap over the drip cap. Fold it back over, back over that because it's still hanging up you taped it up so it doesn't get in the way so you don't you don't put the window in and you forgot oh the house wrap is underneath it so tape it up fold the house wrap back over the drip cap tape up that 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 like perfectly above the drip cap or right above right above the window yeah the drip cap will go like right above there's the window it'll be that weather barrier above the, those two. Yeah. Yeah. But it, does it not need to uh, flap onto the drip cap so it provides a barrier? But so there's nothing you can yes. get behind. Yeah. So you got the window screwed in. Screw in the drip cap. Maybe a couple of screws. Mm -hmm. Weather resistive barrier or house wrap over all of that. So water is going over that. Um, what else? Actually, when we fold this thing up here, I don't know, do we want, want the, the tape up there too? On this top edge? It's protected by the drip cap and every all the details that are after. I think, I think we're okay without it there. Because um, we're going to tape this up as the next step. Tape up the house wrap and drip cap yeah I thought the drip cap only existed you don't have to tape yeah we'll tape over it tape over it tape up the house wrap with drip cap um, you do I think you do want it like when they show it let's see I mean, you definitely want to tape up these corners here, which are slits. Yeah, for sure. That you want to do. Do you want it at the top? I think a lot of people do show it at the top, like, for example, um, window opening detail. Oh, yeah, like, look at this guy, probably. You can see him. So they have this flexible stuff. We're using these. You also have this kind of flex wrap. You can do the what makes corner. a builder successful is not how many homes a year they build or even how much money they make. What makes a builder successful in large part is how much money they get to keep. And that's basically determined by how well they control their callback costs. Now, building science experts like myself have noticed an alarming number of construction defects related to water and moisture problems. And the majority of those are around windows and doors. The lack of flashing is the big cost. One of the most common construction defects that I see is illustrated in this picture. Uh, what you can see, if water were running down this wall, it would run mm -hmm. right in between the gap between the nail fin and the sheathing, the window head. Now, oftentimes, builder would just caught this joint, but the reason why that's not acceptable is, one, it's probably in violation of the manufacturer's window installation instructions, and two, caulking joints typically don't last for the long haul. Uh, for example, if you look at this picture, you can see what happens to the nail fin. 
between we the have sheathing and where the nail fin with here where a caulking joint would be. It's all warped and it's deflected, and so eventually that would pull away from the caulking, creating a window leak. Another common defect I see is reverse flashing at the window head. For example, here you can see that the secondary moisture barrier comes down over the top of the nail fin of the window, and then a piece of peel and stick flashing is stuck uh, to the building rack. That really doesn't provide a great deal of value. How that should have been flashed is that the peel and stick flashing should have been stuck to the nail fin, go up underneath the secondary moisture barrier, and stuck to the sheathing. And then with the secondary moisture barrier down over the top, of the uh, flashing in the nail fan. Another common defect I see is at the silver window. Here's where we can see that the uh, um, silver so flashing they, they is down and then they put the the tape on the yeah, yeah, top of the I think they, the yeah, you do the tape the after, the yeah, like right there, another the guy showed. I, see is the I think right there, you put it down. So this is the house wrap that we folded back down. There's an angular right. cut. Secondary motion and then he's got some tape going on there. Yeah. So yeah, okay. yeah. Do that. What else did they show? of the uh, flashing in the nail fan. Another common defect I see is at the cylinder. So, I mean, what did they show? Do you get this fan. point here? Another common defect. What's the difference between this and what he showed? Uh, there's not much difference, but I think they're pointing to the fact that you've got this thing hanging up, so... Uh, I'm not sure what they're showing, but well, this is the proper, the proper way. So, uh, and it was my understanding that we were screwing the flange into the tape that was behind it, but we're not folding the tape over, screwing in the flange, and then bringing the tape over the flange. Yeah, so there's two layers of tape there. Oh. So. Okay. Uh, we're not done yet. So, uh, underneath the the fin, we already put the butyl tape underneath that. The proper thing mm -hmm. to do here would be actually to put more tape on there because you got all the holes there's whether it's the barrier well there's the flashing tape underneath it the second layer is good like do they have a first layer underneath it um, I'm not sure what they're showing there but here uh, after the nail fin this is good to go over the nail fin mm -hmm. that is good mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether we should eliminate the one that's before that, where we're going into the wood itself. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have the bottom, the one underneath, uh, but to double it, it up. It might be overkill in this. It instance. might be overkill. Here, this this is pretty good because you got all the screws and already in there, and then you're covering over that. And uh, let's 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 finish this video. Then with the secondary motion barrier down over so the top. So yeah, tape it up the, uh, at the top. The what happens there, just the, what you want to pay attention to is that this one is over that one. Not This tape is not above this one because then water. Right, right, the, the top like one is always there. last. The top one's always the last. The top one is always last, so water dribbles down as opposed to otherwise. Okay. Nail. Another common defect I see is at the silver window. Here's where we can see that the uh, sail flashing is reversing. Yeah. It's actually behind the secondary motion. Uh, okay, that's... Of that, the force between the gap, between the nail fin, gap motion barrier, and then here, secondary motion barrier. Okay, okay you, see, you see the issue there, right? Mm-hmm. So the house wrap, like, that's the water protection, and then the water can just go right behind the house wrap mm -hmm. there. So that's pretty bad. That, that house wrap should be, like, tucked underneath. Right. Below that, that tape. Right, 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 right. A lot of money on that. Unfortunately, it was wasted. So the secondary moisture things, yeah. barrier should have been tucked up underneath the flashing so that any water that gets out of the solar window goes over the flashing onto the secondary moisture barrier and then out to daylight. Now, flashing problems are almost always the culprit behind window and door leaks. Occasional windows leak, but the majority of times people just do not flash according to ASTM E2112. So a common sense solution to water and moisture problems is really simple flashing around doors and windows and other penetrations such as dryer vents, electrical panel boxes. And it makes sense to use a fuel-based product because of its long-term ability to stick under high moisture conditions. Butyl products. That's, we're using butyl tape. Um, I would say... This, this we do definitely, like the question is, do we do this under the nailing fin or just over the nailing fin? Did you explain that this is something that uh, there's major disagreement about, about the construction world? Like no, I didn't. It's got to be over. Okay, Katrina, do we put butyl tape under the nailing fin and over the nailing fin? Over the nailing fin. N nothing underneath the nailing fin. We can call it under the nailing fin. Oh, simple. Okay. All right. 
But I think that, yeah, cock usually, like, when we know that don't, don't know if they cock in the building, see the doors, they usually cock be, behind the flange. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, so let's, let's revisit our instructions maybe to say we install the wind, so maybe like, so tape up, well don't cut, cut top of house wrap and tape it up, yes. Yeah. No, there is so now install window, there's right a, there. There's several controversial points, and every builder is going to tell that the way they do it is right, and the way everyone mm -hmm. else does it is wrong, and there's just no agreement between the building science, and the because it takes too many years for a building to walk, <laughs> you have to wait 10, 20 years to find out if you're right. Um, but one of the controversies with windows is what people normally do is do the X, right? And then they wrap it inside, like that. Now, I've seen one builder saying that that's kind of silly because the water is going to follow the house wrap inside. Mm -hmm. It's going to follow that hot and loose resistance so that you should really cut, you should leave that on the top. You should take the but cut it flush all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I was thinking, cut it to where it's just enough of that flap and then this the tape and then you've got double right you've got your, your house yeah, wrap that continues your house wrap and your tape yeah. yes that's how we do it yeah yeah but the the, the, the controversy is on the side some people like traditional builders wrap it on the inside like the flap it like that we did it we did it, we did it halfway or almost all that it's normally done but I've seen one guy, and it kind of makes sense to me, it's like, well, if you do that and there's water running down the house wrap, it's just going to follow, follow its path. Follow the house wrap into yeah, the house, I would say, I yeah. would agree with that. So that's that flush all Yeah, flush and tape. Uh, yeah, flush to the window, not flush. to the flange. You wanted to cover the flange and then tape over, you got that dub dub. Yeah. Oh, right. Right, so I was thinking the that's house wrap goes it. over the flange, over and then the you flange. tape that. Because what they do, that's not what they do, is like, it goes, you do this on the rough opening before the window is on, you cut it flush, and then you tape it. So we do need that tape, uh, the, so what I showed. So you're doing that tape just so you can secure the house wrap, if you don't wrap it towards the inside. Oh, uh, okay. And that's, so that's dub, 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 Okay, so, so don't install the window at step three. But do what we're saying, kind of like and then no, you know, we'll, let, we'll document the, the, yeah. the install the window at five. Yeah. Do that. Especially on forums. Yes. <laughs> Build a forum. Which is a real oh my problem. God, there's so like much pent up anchor in those Every forums. forum, that's <laughs> the infinite. Yeah. God, if we could figure yeah. that out. Yes. I, ha I had to quit uh, Build a Forums because there was so much anger that I would be angry if I was done with anger. It would be, yeah, I would be, it would be, I would be disheartened if I was doing stuff for 30 about. years and then I found out it was wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tape up the house wrap with drip cap. We want the best. But no matter what. Angry about, I'll be pulled off, you know, and saying it's not like, why just do it because I think it's best, and you know, you always agree to do it. No, it's like everyone just yeah, hanging with other people. Well, wait till they get a look at me. Butyl tape over, over, right. nailing thin. I think it's just like, I think it's just that a lot of us do not get enough training in physics to really understand what we're doing. Okay, okay, listen to this. Now, so at the end, we're going to do the butyl tape over the nailing thin, except at the bottom, because you want water to drip out. Right. Yep. And then so the top one is always applied last. Except at bottom. Yes. Well, top tape always applied last. That's it. I just. I so, 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 just so you guys, one way of thinking about this is the the Z flashing and the butyl tape and the house wrap are all part of a system called the the weather resistive barrier, and its function is to keep your house dry because it's made of wood and it's going to rot. Right. Um, 
one way to think about that in general, because we don't have to make lots of choices. Some of them are standards, some are not standards, so you're going to have to know, is that you always have to think about in terms of shingles. Whatever is on top has to be like that, so the water can drain. Shingles. If you have something like that, there's water getting into your house. Mm. So that's what you're saying about the tape. The, the tape the thick at the top is always the last one, so it goes on top of the other ones. So you always have that shingle effect. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, uh, Jeff was telling me about this friend of his who bought, bought a house built by an artist. He took an artistic approach to building it. Oh. And he had, um, <laughs> all of his roof sheeting like this. No. So basically, like you have the top uh, sheet, right, uh, of metal, and then another one like that, and then another oh. one like that. Oh. <laughs> so basically, it rained inside the house like what? the whole time. Water collecting walls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you say he was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he's wrong. I think he meant for this to happen. You don't even appreciate our I just said the guy who bought the house didn't like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so, um, pop quiz. I put Buell tape down there. Wait, say again? I put butyl tape down there, is that correct? Yeah, but on the bottom for the weather resistive barrier, the first one that just does the house wrap. So this is the under layer. This is the first okay, so we're gonna make make the distinction. Prior to installation of window yes. and post installation of window. Prior we're gonna Prior. take one down, post we're not. Yes. Okay. At the bottom you're saying or yeah, over? at the bottom. Just the bottom. The bottom silk uh -huh. plate with where the windows slid in. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Before window install. <laughs> so I'm going to make a separate page. So flashing tape after window installation is going to be this. And we'll get rid of all of this. So this goes at the end after the window is in. So actually, let's paste our window in. So let's take our window. Let's just take that one. So after the window is in, you do this. Let's cut it out a little bit. So the three sides like this, like on top there. Does that make sense? No.
I mean, it might not be every ticket venue. You know? Yeah, look at Hollywood amphitheaters specifically. Because I know that they have a lot of country shows and stuff out here. But that would be a lot more difficult to facilitate. But a lot of those things are dictated by the band and not by the band. Yo, Hollywood have seen as amphitheaters in COVID-19 policy doesn't start until October 4th. But the Jonas Brothers... Because I think we're going to have to still... I probably have it now. I'll check. I may have to remember that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they expect anybody to keep those things. It's like paper. Yeah, and they're too big to fit the wallet. I know, I'm not going to pass it. like, he couldn't have made that like an inch shorter in every dimension. So you see how it's scrimping below? I don't know. No. All right, people. So house wrap in the windows, and that won't go to the door. Yeah. Another house. House wrap in the windows. Okay. And, and take off the protective uh, OSB off the top windows as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do the top, yeah. you know, we do it on, and then we can use our hand the border of the windows. They have these, and they call them. Yeah, we're not like going to run the other day, but like, windows. They don't have here. That's a European thing. I mean, they like, they'll check the paper. I don't want to get arrested and deported and miss the show. Window house wrap will go okay. over the new house wrap. Oh, okay. We'll keep you from being bored. Well, the house wrap that we're doing right now is going to go over existing windows, which already has some house wraps. So, yeah, we can sort of cut out. No, I feel like this will see if I actually tack yeah, my way to the house. Yeah, we'll wrap it. Yeah. And you guys are saying, that's going to be the house wrap. On the second floor? With ladders, it's not a problem, but you got to keep going up and down the ladder. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the vaccination yeah. rules uh, applies to the show. It's, it's not that it's not the problem. The problem is the pharmacist that you're going to get. It could be, yeah, we could but use it then. You have a ladder that doesn't like walk across and everything. Yeah. So we need somebody on the top to... So, yeah, and so the procedure once again, take the four strips, like cut, take the weather resistant bear from the measure and just cut it on the ground. So cut it to like 33 feet? Yes. Such a cut off 33, 33. I don't know, it's a surprise to Jonas so Brothers. Like, yeah. Like, uh, like four four extra extra this I, I doubt they're going to force that. Like, like this, this, this one run, automatons. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I went to a music class. Like, like, yeah. like yeah. June yeah. or yeah. 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 Yeah.
building. Well, I can't get in with the wristband. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't understand. You, you're taking the house for so. Actually, all that's in the list is the negative cost. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. Such fucking bullshit. Yeah. Fuck. 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 You can get a test pretty easily on this thing. I don't see if you show a negative test. Like if you would vote the thing, I'm not sure it's not good enforcement. I'm not sure negative test to the boards and shit. It's just like the you know, most rudimentary little word document ever. Yeah. Oh, you know, send that to the guy who just nice and wait up for it. Flag going down as opposed to kind of all the wrinkles and stuff. But if you're thinking about cutting it before stress, right? And then just doing one cut at a time. If the GA pick ticket holder does not have the mutation, they will be coming to turn a new location. Here's the deal though. For a button, like, when you stick it in, I think they're going to do that a little bit longer. So the next time, so that's what I'm going to do. Well, you're probably fitting it on purpose, it's pretty small. That's the part I didn't do this time. Yeah. Yeah. Is, like a, is, is there any QR codes in all databases? No, I mean there's, there's a database of like pharmacists check it, like they're not going to like go on the database. No, we have to make sure that the pieces are alive to these two people. Because that's a very serious crime as well. Yeah, it's not. I mean like... So hopefully we can do the windows and then... We can get It's basically listed on the like faking your identity. These... What is it like? I just sold the paper or the date. I um I lost mine with one of the vaccines. So my friend who works at a pharmacy just like look up my numbers in the database and like look down and see the price on me. But like no one checks the database. Like you have to have like access to a pharmacy computer to check the database. It's not what you're doing that with wrinkle that thing. I don't know. I doubt it. But that specific card, like does it specific paper to it or like it's just like card stock. I mean, we can find them, like, it's very similar for him, too. Also, like, I'll try to leave, I'll, yeah, then I'll try to leave the second one. Like, honestly, I'm still not available, at least to say, hey, here's what it is. I have nothing to write, yeah, yeah. And it should be on the way, but, you know, so I guess the will be good with this one, like, we keep it off the table, and we have four, and we have four, and we have four, and we have four, Let's see if we can get open source of Tina Pass. Those motherfuckers. Do you have proof of that in Sweden? Proof of what? Your best team in Sweden? I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I walk around Stockholm without washing my hands, making beers, doing whatever they want for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Come tell me I need a fucking <laughs> jab. Like, uh, no. Right. Mm -hmm. I really don't think they're that strict. I mean, like, no another country is probably more strict than European countries. Here, if they want to be a big world, America is a world country. Dude, that means there's going to be so much room in that pit. Well, that's my impression. Also, that's that they're not going to be able to comply with those things. I doubt that anyone's going to actually, like, like, you really think people are going to be, like, in line holding up their car and getting Yes, it, yeah, and it's maybe the reason, though, maybe they don't, because, like, reading up on crossing boards and stuff, it's this and next to the rule. And when you go to the airport, it's just like, oh, no one, you know, it's a different story when you get there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we need to prepare, uh, prepare for the worst. Prepare for the worst. Yeah. You know? Just in case, you know, even if, even if we have to buy like a little vaccine card or something. Yeah. Yeah. Make it's everyone room. else vaccinated because otherwise you need a negative I test. We saw your social likes. I have to see my phone for my life. Ticket holder does not have documentation, will be providing an alternative view and location. Proof of COVID 19 vaccination. Not the they don't say card. 
Okay. Just be like, hey, I'm from a place that has never had health care. Of course I have. I mean, like, if I could call my dad and be like, hey, uh, you have a card, like, it looks Swedish, we can't check it. Or like, uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's probably when, 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 you're, when you're dealing with a human to human and you're they're under pressure, especially if you're in line or something, more than likely they'll be just like, so if my dad could take a photo of his pop, whatever, because he's traveling, like, and then. A nice Photoshop with my first name. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so what I got this fucking little company bandana on. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I think it's five. Bucks. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll be behind you like the rowdy American, like, let's fucking hurry up, a fucking hurry, you're driving me crazy. <laughs> And that's what really makes me nervous. In the that's like, the only Anthony is with the back of the line that's trying to get through. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you holding up that little fucking screen? I'm trying to party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, I feel absolutely terrible. Uh, I'm just gonna go lay it down. It's only six inches already. We're fine. Uh, yeah. That's how I was yesterday. Yeah. I was just like, I just need another nap. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's a new shirt there. It's a little bit of a you think Bobby could do it, actually you should do it, for the purpose of data collection for the real world. So I would actually suggest you do this to the strategies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and also, I have a lot of these positions. We think we can lower that in. Yeah, that is the approach. Um, we have one that only has two people on and worry about the second part. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I mean, especially if we're not in school. Right, I need to have those. Right, I need to have those. So like it's another T option. Oh, okay, so you the have a brewing part part is that you never get your money back if like you're a little bit. And it ends whenever I say that. The idea is that like people are kind of like renting for a short period of time. I have a winning day. I like the uh, people. Yeah. Yeah. How do people earn money? What do you mean, how do people earn money? The whole point of an NFT is anyone who's buying an NFT wants to earn money by selling it later. Right. So, the whole point of so when, I, when I unlock the contract, they can win. If, if they're the highest bidder when I unlock the contract, they get like the sub. So there's like another NFT NFT that gets transferred. So there's like, oh, yeah. Uh, I was but just gonna okay, so I then can they re yeah, yeah, yeah. it up? Oh, that's enough a lot of money. They <laughs> transfer. <laughs> oh yeah, that is great. Um, what if you did like, uh, what if you made it fast, like speed NFT, so like NFT sells in like one minute, and then uh, you have know, people can bid on it? Like, like, there's, there's, I feel like there needs to be some, some, some way for people to buy the NFT to make money. Because, oh no, but they will. Like, they can sell it later. They can withdraw it from the contract as long as they're the winning bid. Yeah. So the, the best part is that everyone asks that it's good. The second floor doesn't have windows on that other side. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. that <laughs> because I feel like the people who didn't win would feel like well, they, 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 they would feel like they lost. Well, they did. So they should. But that incentivizes the person who really wants to win. Yeah. There are those um, there are those auction sites where you like for example you to to uh, to buy an iPhone. Yeah. People will like bid and then like you know they lose. Or, it, 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 rather than um, like losing the whole amount of the bid, 
they spend a fixed amount yeah, to bid it and then it increases like the price. And then there's a bid and bid. And then the winner can Aren't buy it from uh, that uh, price. Uh, but mm -hmm. all the little bids uh, are the way. Oh, I just sent you a link. Because I can't find the OAC GitLab. So that might be one of first where people don't feel like they lost everything, but only like the number of times they click So I'm working on a lot of Right. The people yeah. who lose the auction don't get the money. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, it's normally like one guy mm -hmm. kind of uh, getting to into the auction and uh, mm -hmm. the kind of follow the end. Yeah. Like he some, so some files are hosted on uh, on GitHub. Well, I get yeah. 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 But somebody yeah. cricked it up. Well, they get the end of the season. So, oh, like a flash. Did we use one of those? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a nice thing. Uh, the artist. Oh, yeah. Wow. Does that mean? Yeah. So the table's always yeah. I don't know how much money. Yeah. 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 So I'm like. Yeah. So mine would be. Oh, okay. So I use that. Um, but if you yeah, have yeah, a photograph, you are. Uh, okay. Yeah. But there's no group. There's no, yeah, there's no yeah. activity. Yeah. Uh, GitLab, the Gino, no, no, you're on the, you're on a different uh, space. You're on the Gino project right now. No, this is just host, me. Hosts just self host their own guys. Uh, just, just because I don't what we want to do, you use the Google <laughs> so search. Like uh, why uh, because what we want to do is to coordinate the uh, house activities in the project. Anyone has got to come on board. Reality itself will follow Because right now, Lance has a list. Okay. And then, uh, you want to be able to actually in the you get an audience like that. I'm like, if you don't already have an audience. No, no, you're telling the wrong thing. Like, uh, uh, get uh, less. Uh, you have to go to if, if the biz are high enough to get on the auction, they want on the auction. Well, well, it will probably go like that forever. You <laughs> might. <laughs> or someone will, will say it's valuable, and then everyone else will see that that Oh, that valuable. allowed me to go in there to log into the other one. Yeah, because yeah. Genome, Genome is, uh, is, uh, I don't think is I open. So you're not in a school, I just want to get your, your name. So maybe you're not qualified. You're yeah, yeah, of course. Alright, well, okay, in any case, I need like some cool Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a bottle of wine left, Logan? Yeah. 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 Y